everyone welcome to this particular video in this video i mainly wanted to talk about my experiences with the rfhd or the royal air force uh, sele um, airman selection test i just wanted to talk about my experiences my thoughts my opinions a bit about what i went through um, some of the pitfalls that i had and hopefully it can help uh, sort of anybody else out there um, sort of help them on their path towards passing their particular test and i'll also be providing some links um, some resources and tips um, things that i found particularly useful uh, when uh, when conducting my particular um asd and some of the tools that i found as, uh, especially resourceful and useful in me preparing for my particular asd now before i head on straight to the video um if you don't know what uh, sort of the ASD is, um, generally speaking, the ASD is um, one of the tests that you take prior to um, sort of joining the um, joining the actual Air Force or even progressing your application further. Uh, and it also sort of judges your um, strengths and abilities, um, sort of your weaknesses and that will essentially determine which roles sort of might be suited for you and certain roles have different criteria, so they, it, it can vary and the way that it's assessed is essentially you go through all the tests all the different sections of the test and then at the end you're given an average and then that average would need to meet a certain role that you're striving for and if it's below that you would um they would essentially say that um you you'll be qualified for other roles, if not your desired role. And if you get below a certain amount, um, you would have to take the test again. And you can even test, take the test again if you don't sort of, if you don't qualify for the role that you want and you're given a second try. It's usually a period of about 28 days. You would have to wait to take it again. And then you can take it again. If you do fail the second time, I think from from what i know i'm not 100 percent sure about this but from what i know i think you would have to wait a number of years to really sort of um to take the test again essentially so jumping right in um i took my test on the 18th of march and we actually went to the afco and i thought we would be doing a paper-based test but it actually turned out that it was a tablet um we were going to be doing a test on a tablet and the staff was super friendly um or the airmen and airwomen, they were very friendly and it was a great experience actually. And the start, the test actually started off by, I've got a list here just to make sure that I'm not forgetting anything. It started off with verbal reasoning, which was the first test. And before this, I'd actually um, put my results up just so you know how I performed. And I'll actually discuss it um, after I've gone through all the subsections just so you understand. Um, so the first test was actually the verbal reasoning test. And this is essentially where you're given a passage of text that you would have to read through and analyze. And then you're given sort of uh, some bullet points. And I think it was at least four bullet points um, that you would have to pick one from. And what's special about the verbal reasoning test is that it's not just a case of reading it and then answering it, but more about reading it, understanding the piece of text putting pieces of information together and then answering the question. So you can see how it's a little bit more complicated. Um, but I mean, if you, someone who's very good at um, verbal reasoning or reading in general, um, you know, you'll risk through this. I personally found it a bit of a struggle since I got, I broke down in, into too much detail. I wasted a lot of time in that sense. So that's something to try to avoid and to try to, try and avoid overanalyzing things. So I, I would also say that if you don't know the answer to a specific question, it's always best to sort of give, just give an answer and move on. And this is because if you leave it blank with the intention of coming back, you might not be able to because you might be out of time. So it's just, it's important to just give an answer since you might have some sort of chance of scoring something. Since if you leave it blank, I think it's a pretty much a guaranteed um, sort of a guaranteed fail for that particular question. And that's the mistake that I made. Um, so that's one thing to consider. With the numerical reasoning, this, which is the next stage, is the numerical reasoning. It essentially comes in two parts. The numerical reasoning, 
the first part of the numerical reasoning mainly covers things like fractions, things like algebra, um, ratios, percentages, um, addition, division, subtraction, basics like that. Um, so it's important to revise the basics of uh, sort of basics of numerical reasoning in that sense. Just practice sort of quick calculations um, and try and avoid doing it on paper since this can be very time consuming and it's something that's not very efficient since you've only got a period of four minutes so you need to really condense it down. Um, try and practice mental maths as much as you can and this is actually a mistake that I made. Um, I wasn't focusing on too much. I wasn't, I relied on paper-based calculation, calculations a lot more and that's what really took time. So just try and do everything mentally as much as you can. Um, so you can pretty much just whiz through the whole thing. I didn't find it that much difficult, but I would say that I spent too much time on sort of calculating things and I wasn't able to hit each and every one of them. So it's important to just speed up your calculations a little bit more. And this is quite easy to practice. Um, I'll put a link down below to a site that really, really, really helps with this, um, which it gives you um, a time sort of, a feature to pick a time frame, which is four minutes or any other time frame that you like, more or less. And it also helps you pick a level to which you can perform at or the difficulty that you want. So this helps you really sort of get an idea of the type of questions that you might get and adapt um, your mind to different sorts of questions so that any question that you're given, you're able to confidently sort of tackle it in that sense. And now moving on to the next part, which is statistics um, and sort of data interpretation and those kinds of things, um, looking at a chart or a bar graph or anything like that with data in it and deriving certain information from that and making a conclusion or answering specific pieces of information given in the question. And these get harder as they go along. So in the beginning, you might think it's easy. You know, um, you might think that, okay, I can answer this quite confidently. And I was able to answer them, but then as they got a little, a lot harder, um, as the questions got more complicated, it got a lot more difficult. And so it's important to, especially when you're running out of time, answer what you can and move on since the next question might be something that you actually can answer. So that's something to consider with the numerical reasoning. When it comes to spatial reasoning, um, this was again split into two parts um, and I can I found this surprisingly a bit difficult even though I practiced quite a bit um, and it was actually the most fun part <laughs> of the whole um, ASD. The first part I think the first part mainly was to do with um, rotations so you were given um, a couple of shapes and sometimes there were letters a couple of shapes and you were given different rotations and you would have to match the correct or the logical rotation um, that both the shapes had. So you'd really, you really need to sort of visualize the actual answer and um, yeah, again, try and visualize the actual answer and as quickly as you can, try and understand where certain points would be and how it would logically rotate and then answer the question in that sense. So that's what I faced um, in that instance. There was also another section of the spatial reasoning, which I actually don't clearly uh, remember. Uh, the work rate aspect of the test mainly um, judges sort of how fast you work and how fast you uh, problem solve and pick up pieces of information. It simply just involves sort of um, them giving a piece of code and then a simple table by which you sort of derive the information and then answer the questions below. And it's a little bit difficult to explain in this particular video. And I'll, like I said, I'll definitely include a link below to help you understand exactly what I mean. But it's quite simple sort of once you get the hang of it. And I think you were given an instructional sort of um, video um, at the beginning, um, just before you complete the test and as well as sort of a mock kind of a test just so you understand um, what's Sort of what's expected um, of you within that within that section of the test and in this particular test it's important that you work really really quickly um, and accurately as well since it's easy to miss certain things and 
<clears throat> it's easy to sort of overlook certain things when you're under pressure. So it just, that's what it judges. Um, and I actually found this quite fun. Um, and I thought I did well at it, but it turned out that my accuracy was a little bit low. So it's important that you're fast and you're accurate with this particular um, type of test. And I think from what I can remember, you're given a time frame of four minutes. I might not be accurate with this, but it's around four minutes. Um, and moving on from there, the electrical. So the electrical reasoning um, part of the test mainly tests your sort of electrical comprehension and understanding. So here is really important to sort of have a base level knowledge of um, electri electrical reasoning um, and electrical principles. And it's I would probably say it's about GCSE level um, from what I from what I experienced. And it mainly involves things like circuits, um, things like understanding ohmmeters, ammeters, um, basics like that, um, you know, parallel circuits, uh, and as well as um, wavelengths. Um, and I'm not 100% sure of the technicalities, but this is what it mainly involved. And one thing I would say in the electrical reasoning is that it's really important to have a f like almost like a foundational knowledge on the whole thing instead of just picking out pieces of information that you think are relevant to the test, try and have a broad knowledge, since sometimes what happens is that when I was taking mock tests, there were certain tests or certain questions that I received in the ASD that weren't in the mock test or anywhere else. I had actually hadn't seen those questions anywhere else. So just try and understand that to have a broad knowledge and you revise everything within the electrical reasoning since you might be faced with any question. And if you revised everything, you'll be able to adapt um, better because you have a foundational knowledge on, on electrical reasoning as a whole. So if you approach it with that stance, I think you'll be really, really successful in that sense. So the next part was mechanical reasoning and this is actually my favorite part. Um, I did really well in this part for some reason. Um, and it mainly involved things like cogs, levers, um, pivots, fulcrums, um, things like water levels, um, pressure, and things like that, basic fundamentals like that. So it's, we also face questions like, um, if this cork turns in this direction, um, you know, which direction will, will the fifth cork turn, and basics like that. And again, having a sort of a foundation knowledge on this particular area is also really, really important, and I found it pretty important as well. So. This part was, it's quite simple and I would also say it's fairly somewhat common sense. So yeah, that's a mechanical reasoning. The last but not least was memory. Now this area was really, really interesting and I, did, I didn't do very well in memory <laughs> for some reason. Um, I actually quite, I struggled quite a bit with the, with the memory part of things and it's split into two parts. The first part of the memory test essentially involves uh, letters. And you would essentially get a sequence of letters shown to you or um, as in flashed on the screen. And at the end, you would get a question like, you know, what was the gap between this letter and this letter? Or how many letters were there in between, you know, uh, A and uh, um, C, things like that. So one handy tip that I found in this section is using your fingers. So if you get a sequence that flashes on the screen with letters, you know, you, you should use your fingers to sort of keep track of the letters and keep track of the gap in between them. So when the question comes, you're able to answer it with a better level of accuracy. The next part of the memory, memory um, test was that we were shown uh, patterns, cubes, and within those particular cubes, or within those cubes, um, certain grids were filled in with a certain sequence and we received about three of those sequences and then at the end you would have to merge them together mentally merge them together and answer the particular question so it takes a bit of visualization and understanding um you know memorizing particular patterns and putting them together and answering the particular question i found it pretty difficult to be honest i found the first part a bit easier and then at the end of the ASD, after everything finished um I was taken to my um, sort of uh, almost like a room where I would be um, told my results and, um, you know, the next steps, essentially. And I didn't do very well. 
um, I got, I think I got around 30 or so, which is not even the minimum requirement. Um, even though I'd spent quite a bit of time preparing and I feel that the mistake that I made and hopefully the mistake that you can avoid is mainly not answering every question. And when you don't know an answer, just when you don't know a particular answer, just answer it since there might be um, a chance of you getting it right. And for the role that I was going for, there were only really a few more points that I needed to get there. So answering those questions, even if you don't know them, um, can really help you bump up your score a bit more. Um, and I think also better revision tactics would have helped as well in that sense. So I really want to say that, you know, if you have sort of failed in the past with your ASD, I just do definitely want to say that don't give up. There definitely is hope in the future. And try and understand where your weaknesses are and try and understand where you sort of fall short so you can sort of strengthen those area and bump up your score. Um, and it definitely should not block you from a fulfilling career uh, in the RAF. And yeah, that was mainly my experience um, with the um, sort of RAF ASD. And if you have passed, well, a very congratulations to you. And definitely let me know in the comments below sort of what you did differently, you know, so you can help others and um, if, even people like myself. Um, and I'd love for you to share your stories as well to see sort of what you face in the RFASD, what you went through, um, were your experiences similar to mine. Um, so that's mainly sort of the point of this whole video. Um, I hope this video has somewhat helped you and has given you some sort of an insight on the RFASD. And I, I hope I've communicated well um, on this video. Uh, with that, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope this helped and feel free to sort of subscribe or like this video if you liked it. Let me know what worked, what didn't, um, what information you'd like um, and I'm happy to provide it. And I'll also be sort of linking my um, or projecting my results um, on this particular page. And this is actually the certificate that you'll get at the end. I think I got it on the same day if, or the same day of me doing my ASD. So thank you so much for watching this video.